I'm here today with Dr. Cherie Hughes-Stam, Assistant Professor of Forensic Science in the Department of Forensic Science at Sam Houston State University in Texas. So thanks for joining us today, Cherie. Pleasure. In addition to your academic appointment at Sam Houston State University, you also conduct your research at the Southeast Texas of Applied Forensic Science. Can you tell us about the facility and its goals? Yeah, so the STAFFS facility um, is a multidisciplinary research facility um, that can be used to study anything surrounding death or taphonomy of, of human remains. So that can be research such as my own, looking at DNA degradation over time and different aspects of degradation or DNA markers that I can use over time, but also other researchers such as forensic entomologists, microbiologists, chemists that look at other aspects of, of death and decay um, also conduct their research there. Wow, you have access to many samples such as decomposing bodies, bones, teeth, and you can even simulate IEDs. Uh, these are all challenging to work with. They're all truly highly degraded samples for forensics, and they all only contain touch quantities of DNA. How do you extract enough DNA from these samples to be able to process them through a forensic workflow? Yeah, well, with having that many types of samples, there's no one extraction method that tends to work beautifully for everything. However, I use a multitude of different extraction methods, um, a lot of silica-based methods and columns and beads, um, but I also use, have just started using Prepfiler um, for bone and teeth samples. And I found that Prepfiler um, BTA in particular for these types of samples has performed extremely well in our lab. I've been very happy with this product. It's, I've got almost a tenfold yield of um, DNA from some of these really, really difficult um, skeletal samples. So along with that, how, what analysis methods are you using to get the maximum amount of information from such minimal samples. Yes, yeah, so after extraction, we go through and quantify our DNA and we use Quantifier Trio for that. So it's a really nice product that it gives us a really um, nice little snapshot and overview of the, not only the quantity, but also the quality of the DNA we're getting from these very challenging samples. So we, of course, we've got our, de our degradation index, which gives us an idea of, of um, the fragmentation we may have. Um, we've got our um, IPC that allows us to give us a good idea if we've got some inhibitors coming through. We've co-extracted some, from some of those, particularly the skeletal samples and a lot of calcium and things coming through that we, we want to make sure we're not um, co-extracting any inhibitors. Um, we got that and then also moving on to STR typing we use Global Filer and um, we've found that Global Filer works almost too well. It is extremely sensitive. We get beautiful profiles um, from very small amounts of DNA most of the time um, and we're able, we're able to get some really good results using both of those products. Along with these methodologies, these more traditional methodologies that you've discussed, uh, you're also investigating some alternative DNA marker types using next generation sequencing. How do you see adding these to your investigative process? Yes, yeah, so we've used a little bit of a pot puree of, M of MPS um, panels in our laboratory. Um, so we've looked at using the PGM and preparation on the chef combined. We're able to look at the identity and the ancestry SNP panels. And also we've just started looking at the mito um, panel as well to see if we can get more information from some of these really, really degraded and low level samples. So it's able to widen the scope on the information that we get from these types of samples as opposed to just our identification via, via STRs. Excellent. Well, your research is truly amazing, Shuri. Um, thank you for joining us today and thank you for your insights. To learn more about this, you can go to thermofisher.com forward slash HID.